Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest here in the heart of Europe. I hope everybody has had a fantastic weekend. Looking forward to a great weekend. Hi, Hemant Sharma. Good to see you in class. This is a members chat class. Everybody is welcome to watch. We will have an all chat class coming up in 90 minutes that will be listening parts three and four continuation from yesterday. While we wait for some more members to join in, this lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS help. Check us out there. And for the general version of the exam, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. That's generalieltshelp.com. On both of these websites, we have loads of great materials for you to improve your band scores. This is the aehelp.com website here. You can click that big red button to join the premium package, which includes over 100 hours of HD video lessons for all four sections, listening, reading, writing, speaking, as well as original practice exams and a fully interactive course, all of which you can use on your phone, tablet, PC. And uh, for the general IELTS, same idea, green background, gieltshelp.com. Click that big red button to join there. And these websites are fully supported by our applications that you can get from your Google Play and Apple App Stores. Search for Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. And if you have questions, you can reach out to me at any time. Send me an email. Adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N at aehelp.com. You can ask me questions about the IELTS exam or about um, our products and I'll happily answer those questions for you. All right, so uh, for those of you who like to study from paperback books, uh, check out A Helps Academic IELTS and G Helps General IELTS on Amazon. There are two academic books and two general IELTS books. Each of those have three full exams. Hi, Ferdovs. All right. I think the stream is a bit slow today, but I can see more and more people are joining up. All right. So again, today we are looking at a reading passage taken from one of our sample exams. And then again, we will finish listening parts three and four after that. Hi, Preeti. Then tomorrow, uh, we will have a question and answer session for members. So members, make sure to write down your questions and have them ready for tomorrow's class. And then we'll finish up the week with speaking part two where everybody can join up. All right, let's get into today's reading. This is passage three uh, taken from our sixth exam. Let me get nice and big here for you. All right, so uh, passage three. Passage three can often be a little bit more challenging on a more specific topic. Uh, here we're looking at the title, and the title is uh, Painting the Sistine Chapel. So Painting the Sistine Chapel. Uh, when we look at this, uh, what comes to mind? So what are your predictions? What will this passage be about? So Hamant, Ferdovs, Preeti, welcome Amira. Uh, when you look at this uh, very intricate picture, intricate means lots of details. You look at this intricate picture or this intricate painting, and then you read the title, Painting the Sistine Chapel. Uh, what comes to mind? So what do you think of, right? Of course, you should apply critical thinking. So what is it, right? What is it? What do you think that means, painting the Sistine Chapel? So go through your steps and keep it simple. So what does it mean, uh, painting the Sistine Chapel? Okay, so what does that mean? 
And then why would we read about this? So why read about this? Uh, another way you can think about that is what's special about it? Okay. So Amira says probably something about the chapel's location and history, the causes. Um, Amira, maybe, but pay attention to the details. So if it were about the history and the location of the chapel, then it would maybe the title would just be the Sistine Chapel, Amira. Um, but here we have painting the Sistine Chapel. So rather than the history or the location of the Sistine Chapel, it, it's better to think about this first word here and come to the inference that it's likely about the history of the painting inside the Sistine Chapel, right? There you go, Amira. So the colors, the motifs, the message, maybe the person who painted the Sistine Chapel. Okay, why is that painting special? So that's what should come to mind, okay? Uh, why maybe it's by a famous painter? Uh, maybe it has a very unique message to uh, the people. So that's what you have to think about, okay? All right, so we look at the, the uh, picture. We think critically about it. We answer it here so uh, it is a famous historical and intricate painting uh, perhaps it is well known around the world okay why read about this uh, it's special it is worth a lot it is seen by many tourists. It's old. Okay, so that's what comes to mind. How uh, a famous painter painted the chapel hundreds of years ago with maybe some special techniques. Okay, that's what should come to mind. All right, so that's what you're thinking here. Always consider the full title. So uh, when you're predicting, and this is an important tip, and Amira, thank you for reminding me of this suggestion. So uh, when you are predicting or inferring information from the title, make sure to consider the whole title, okay? Not just a part of it. You'll be much more accurate. This way, your prediction will be more accurate. Okay? All right. So we did that. Now we can take a look at the questions and uh, see what more information we can gather uh, from these questions, okay? Haman says, might be that the painting faded away, some new renovations were done using special materials. Absolutely, Hamant, and you're definitely on the right track. So good. So you're thinking about the past and the present, and that's very clever, Hamant, okay? Good. All right, so here we have this uh, complete each sentence with the correct ending A to I below, write the correct letter A to I in boxes 27 to 32 on your answer sheet. So here uh, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six incomplete sentences or half sentences. And then here we have uh, four, eight, nine. Uh, possible choices, which means that three of these are wrong or incorrect. We don't know which ones, so we don't need to read this because we could be filling our head with false and confusing information. However, here we have information that's definitely in the passage, so we want to review this. So read with me. 
The Sistine Chapel is. Michelangelo had been concerned with his. Aha! So this is Michelangelo's work, and probably many of you know that Michelangelo is one of the most famous artists in history. It's not just a painter, but a sculptor and a very famous artist. Uh, a logistical problem Michelangelo faced was unpainted areas of the chapel. A common misconception is that four years of working in uncomfortable conditions mean that Michelangelo must have had something. Okay, so good. So we skim over those, we read over those. If uh, we don't understand all of the words, that's okay. We're just getting a feel for the information. Now here we have some multiple choice. We know that right away from this choose the correct letter A, B, C, or D. Write the correct letter in boxes 33 to 35. Um, why was plaster laid each day? Now here, um, we already have good information that we want to keep in mind, okay? Multiple choice, you only read the question and then you convert this to a statement. Um, what would be the statement version for this question? So how can you change this question into a statement that you probably will see in the passage? What can you do there? So when you read it, you should always convert questions, multiple choice questions into statements so that you can identify the information much faster and more accurately in the paragraphs. Yeah, Hamant, very good, exactly. So Hamant says, uh, plaster was laid each day because. Yeah, so that's absolutely what you want to do in your mind, Hamant. Very good. Amira, very nice, same idea. So as soon as you convert it into a statement, now your brain will catch that. Now don't worry about the choices because we don't know which one is correct. Three of them are wrong and that's just going to confuse us. So we go to the next uh, question or statement. Sometimes they give you the statement and we do the same. So we read it and we convert it. So what did other fresco painters do that Michelangelo did not? Uh, some fresco painters did this, but Michelangelo didn't. Okay, so we convert it. The Sistine Chapel has survived to modern day because, now that's a statement, we don't need to do anything with it. You can, however, practice paraphrasing because oftentimes when it's a statement, it will be paraphrased. So the Sistine Chapel is still around today since. Okay, so I can paraphrase that using my own words. Okay, good. Now, here we have some yes, no, not given questions. We've talked about the strategy for these, so we'll do that strategy later. We don't review them because it's confusing, false information there. So that's not going to help us. Okay, now, um, when you have a passage like this one, where it's painting the Sistine Chapel, is this a physical passage or is it abstract? So is this physical, meaning it's concrete or real world? Or is it abstract? Abstract means you can't touch it, okay? Means it's just in conceptual uh, theory, okay? So, uh, abstract would be like, uh, for example, talking about uh, social structure, or social responsibility, or talking about the psychology of a three-year-old. Uh, so that would be an abstract. So is this abstract 
or is this real world? Is it something that we can see and touch and feel, or is it something that we can only understand in our heads? Okay, uh, Preeti, you're right, it's physical. This is very, very physical, right? Uh, one of the ways that you know right away that this is a concrete physical topic is you have a picture, okay? It's very difficult to give a picture of an abstract idea. Usually you won't have that. Uh, maybe some of you are familiar with that passage, Why Study Philosophy, for example. Okay, so when you know, this is a very important point, okay? When you know that the passage is about a concrete physical topic, what should you really focus to do? Okay, this is a really important tip. It can really help you save some marks and get a higher band score. So when you realize that a passage is about a concrete or physical topic, you must immediately remember to do what? So you realize it's a physical topic, you realize it's something that we can possibly touch and feel and see, so what should I do as I'm reading, while I'm reading the passage? What do I need to do? And hopefully, some of you are thinking visualize, okay? So include yourself in the information and make it interesting. For example, in this case, perhaps you are the famous artist Michelangelo. Okay, so that's what you have to do. Yeah, Preeti, so connect it with yourself, be present, okay? Uh, that's what uh, our grandparents uh, did really well before the age of television is when they read stories, they became the heroes and the heroines of those stories and they use their imagination to be a part of the story. In this way, books are more exciting than movies because we're not far from the story like in movies, but we're a part of the story and it's more exciting, okay? Yeah, exactly, Hamon. Maybe you're a tour guide uh, in the uh, Sistine Chapel. Absolutely, so connect it with yourself. That way you remember the information in the passage much better and you comprehend it more. All right, perfect. So let's do that. So be a part of the story. Let's read together. Students, read with me. I'm not just reading for you, of course. Uh, that would be less effective. But read with me, okay? So from the top, here we go. Uh, painting the Sistine Chapel. The Sistine Chapel, named after Pope Sixtus IV, whom directed his construction, its construction, is one of the most important sites in all of Roman Catholicism. Located within the Vatican, the seat of papal power, the Sistine Chapel has been home to the papal conclave, the process of electing a new pope, since its completion in 1480. It wasn't until 1508, however, that the ceiling of the chapel took on its famous frescoes from the hand of Michelangelo. Until his work on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo had primarily been a sculptor. In fact, he was hesitant to begin work on the project due to his lack of experience with frescoes, the name given to a painting on a wall or ceiling, usually watercolor paint on fresh plaster. The Pope was adamant, however, and in the spring of 1508, Michelangelo began the work. Okay, uh, what is the introduction about? So, what information did you catch in your own words from this introduction? Now, 
some students like to read fast, some students like to read slow, but all students should take time with the introduction and the conclusion. Don't rush through the introduction. That's another tip for today. Okay, so do not. A lot of students are scared that they will run out of time if they're reading slowly um, or if they read every word, but one paragraph that you should definitely really pay attention to is the introduction. Otherwise, you can miss the boat altogether. So do not rush through the introduction. This is arguably the most important paragraph of the passage, which helps you to understand and process information so that you can give correct answers. Okay, don't rush the introduction, right? So what was that about? What comes to mind, okay? And you should practice doing this regularly at home where you read a paragraph and then you ask yourself, what is paragraph in this case, A, about. And then you answer it as best as you can. Okay? So, it's about the importance of the Sistine Chapel for Catholic religion and about the painter, Michael Angelo, who painted its ceiling at the beginning of the 16th century. Okay, so you should be able to get this much information from that introduction. Okay. Um, if you can get this much information, then you can get a band 6.5. If you get this much, you can get band 6.5 or more, okay, depending on how much more you understood. Now, uh, if you don't, so if you did not understand this much, you will likely get less than band 6.5. Okay, that's just the reality of it. If you didn't understand that much, you need to go back a little bit, work more on your vocabulary, your reading fluency, and so on. Okay. All right. Um, Ferdov says, Michelangelo was forced to paint the ceiling by the Pope. Yeah, P-O-P-E, Ferdov's. Otherwise, it's pop. Um, Amira says the history or painting, maybe something like that. Uh, Haman says when the painting was started, yeah, in 1508, who sanctioned it, the Pope, who it was named after, right? Um, and then uh, also who painted it, Hamant, Michelangelo. Okay, so you're on the right track. Okay, great. So with this same spirit in mind, um, we're going to continue reading. Read with me. Okay. The first problem with painting the Sistine Chapel ceiling was its extraordinary height. Reaching almost 70 feet above the chapel's surface, the ceiling would be incredibly difficult to access. To reach it, Michelangelo devised a series of scaffolds that attached to holes in the walls of the chapel. To this day, there are still unpainted areas of the chapel corresponding to the points at which the scaffolding attached to the walls. Okay, so in this paragraph here, uh, we're clearly dealing with uh, the problem of painting the Sistine Chapel because the ceiling is really high. So there were scaffolds that were built by Michelangelo. Now, for some people, the word scaffolds might be new, okay? Whenever you see a new word 
in a reading passage? Yeah, pretty very good. The problem or the challenge, absolutely. When you see a new word, uh, come back to it at some point, if not immediately, then after you finished with the passage and the answers, come back to that word. Make sure to write it out into your vocabulary <coughs> sheet. So with new vocabulary, this is what you should do. Okay, write the word scaffold. Write the word form. It's a noun. Okay. And this is a structure used uh, for building and support. And then write a unique example that uses the word scaffold. It should include you. It should be unique. And it should be interesting. So I was standing on top of a scaffold which I made for Valentine's Day. So that I could hand a red rose to my lovely wife on the sixth floor of the building. Okay. And today is Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Um, I'm using my context of today. Why not? I was standing on top of a scaffold, which I made for Valentine's Day so that I could hand a red rose to my lovely wife on the sixth floor of the building. Uh, a scaffold student. So if here's the building, okay. Here's my lovely wife uh, peering out of the building, okay. The scaffold would be this type of a structure that painters and builders use uh, on the outside of the building or on the inside in Michelangelo's case, where I would be standing here and handing a beautiful rose to my wife for uh, Valentine's Day. Okay, so that would be the concept there to represent this example sentence. Because I included myself, I made it unique and complex. I'm practicing my grammar. I'm remembering the vocabulary scaffold for a long time. And I can recall, I can use that vocabulary in the future. It's much, much more effective than writing it a hundred times. And hey, if you have an artist in you, then you can even draw little pictures and write the word scaffold. Okay. So there you go. Thanks, Preeti. All right. Uh, Ferdov says, I used the scaffold to set the lamp on the ceiling because. So Ferdov's good start, make it complex. Okay, make it comp complex. So make your sentence as complex as possible. Okay, so I used the scaffold to set the lamp on the ceiling so that I can continue to study IELTS and get a high score. All right, for Dobbs, complex sentence every time. All right, students, so that's what you want to do with new vocabulary that you come across in your reading practice. Okay, all right. Amira, I'm glad that you enjoyed that drawing. Okay, uh, let's go back. So here we visualize, we see Michelangelo on top of this big scaffolding that he built to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Okay, uh, let's keep reading here. Unlike Hollywood portrayals, Michelangelo did not paint the ceiling whilst on his back. Instead, he painted in an upright position. This resulted in rather extreme neck soreness from constantly working with his neck craned into an uncomfortable position. Michelangelo even wrote a poem detailing the difficulties he encountered. It is a testament to the physical prowess and mental fortitude of Michelangelo that he was able to complete the project. Four years of physical and mental anguish must have been truly unbearable. Painting frescoes is a labor-intensive task. Because the plaster must be fresh, this necessitates that fresh plaster be laid on every single day for that day's painting work. Hey, wait a second. 
This sounds exactly like the statement that I made for one of those multiple choice questions. Plaster be laid on every single day for that day's paint for that day's paint work. Okay. This section of plaster is called a giornata and the edges between giornate are still visible today. In fact, these visible section demarcations give a great idea of how the work progressed from day to day. While most fresco painters used a pre-made drawing of the day's work to stencil onto the plaster, therefore making the painting easier, Michelangelo painted directly on the fresco. Okay, cool. So I visualized that, right? Other painters, they kind of used the sketch and then painted on top of that. Michelangelo, such an incredible artist, just painted directly onto the plaster. This is perhaps the most impressive aspect of the fresco. Every day, Michelangelo continued the back-breaking work under the continuous pressure from the reigning Pope Julius II. All right, so lots of visualization there. Let's keep going. In addition to its beauty and majesty, the masterpiece has passed the test of time. Painted over 500 years ago, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel has survived remarkably well. All of the credit for this hardiness goes to Michelangelo, who was painstaking in his pursuit of perfection. If a section of plaster was not exactly to his standards, he would start over. He must have known that his work might last for centuries, and he wanted to make sure that it did. The quality of the plaster's work is germane to the longevity of the work. Paint can be restored through cleaning, but if the plaster fails, the work is lost. Only a very small section of the ceiling has failed. In 1797, there was an explosion at a near, nearby gunpowder depot, which caused a small section to chip away and fall to the ground. All right, so that paragraph talking about the quality of the work that Michelangelo did and how it survived the test of time being present for now over 500 years. Very impressive. Let's keep going. There was also some minor restoration work done on the ceiling in the late 20th century. Restoration experts meticulously removed layer upon layer of soot, grime, dirt, and other deposits. This made the fresco much brighter and more vibrant and resulted in a fresco much closer in appearance to how it would have appeared at the time of its completion. Interestingly, the restoration also involved removing the fig leaves, which covered Michelangelo's nudes. These fig leaves had been ordered in the 1560s by the very conservative Pope Pius IV. So there is that talk of that restoration work that you predicted, Hamant. Very good. So that's how you know you're doing a good job visualizing, predicting, when you start to read what you're actually thinking about. So good job, Hamant. Thumbs up. There it is. Okay. Despite its record of hardiness, there are concerns about the well-being of the ceiling moving forward. Millions of tourists visit the chapel every year, and this traffic has a degrading effect on the paint, as well as the structure of the chapel. While restoration on the paint can periodically be done, it is very difficult, if not impossible, to restore damaged plaster. While Michelangelo's work has stood the test of time so far, it is unclear how many more centuries his masterpiece will last. There you go. Okay, so we read it. Now, I know there are a lot of students out there who think that they can get high band scores without reading, but it's not true. Okay, if you're one of those students that can get a good band score by just skimming and scanning the text and searching for answers, you can probably get an even better score if you read the text properly as it's intended. Otherwise, 
you're not going to get a band score over six just by skimming and scanning. There's too much paraphrasing going on. So you need to be able to read. Not to mention the difficulty you will have reading in English in university if you cannot complete these passages. All right. Keeping that in mind, uh, let's keep moving forward. So the Sistine Chapel is... All right. Um, how can you finish that sentence in your own words? Okay. So what can you write there? The Sistine Chapel is... Before we search for the answer from the nine possible choices, try to complete it on your own and then find the correct match with the correct grammar. So what can you say about the Sistine Chapel here? The Sistine Chapel is what? There's kind of two important points that I can say here that come to my mind. Okay, so the Sistine Chapel is a church that's kind of redundant for Dawes because chapel and church have the same meaning. So I don't think they would say that kind of redundancy. Okay, the Sistine Chapel is what? So the Sistine Chapel is one of the ones that come to my mind is important for Catholics. Maybe a big C there. Yeah, that's what it is. So the Sistine Chapel is important for Catholics. That's what kind of comes to my mind. Okay, uh, Ferdov says it's the residence of the Pope. Sure. Okay. Yeah, Haman says it's an important place where the Pope is selected. Okay, Yvonne says it's an attractive place for tourists. Okay, um, sure. So those are some good ideas. Uh, now, let's see which one of these matches grammatically. So the grammar has to work in these sentences. It cannot be grammatically incorrect, and it might match what... Um, just brief, uh, Catholics are, it's a type of, it's a form of um, Christianity or it's a form of religion. It's one of the biggest religious groups in the world, just preet. Okay. Um, so one of the oldest Roman Catholic holy sites. I don't remember reading that for Dobbs. Amira, I don't remember reading that it's one of the oldest Roman Catholic, Catholic sites and um, Roman Catholicism. Ooh, a lot of you are picking that. That also shows me that you don't know much about the history of Catholicism or Christianity. Um, Christianity, as students, has been around uh, since about 300 AD. Okay, so about 300 AD, uh, Catholicism has been around. Um, the oldest Catholic sites are well over 1,500 years old. Uh, this church is only 500 years old. So this would not be the correct answer here. I don't remember reading or visualizing this at all. I'm not sure why you're getting that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Sistine Chapel is located in the Vatican. Okay. It is C. All right. So the correct answer here is C. Careful, careful. Okay. If you're not sure, so here it looks like many of you were like, oh, I'm not sure. Right. Then uh, you should go back to the reading. And usually these are in order, but there's not, no guarantee. Okay. So what I can do is I can go back. If I'm not sure, I can go back and look for Sistine Chapel. Okay, so I can skim for that if I'm really confused. Okay, and if I go back to the very beginning, and then I can see uh, the Sistine Chapel, 
is named is named after Pope Sixtus IV. Okay, that wasn't one of my choices. Okay, it's one of the most important sites in Roman Catholicism. Definitely not one of the oldest. Located within the Vatican. Okay, so the Sistine Chapel is located in the Vatican. That looks good. Okay, has been home to the papal conclave. So now I know that it's C. Okay, but it's most important, not the oldest. So careful. Okay, the correct answer there is C. Okay, the Sistine Chapel is located in the Vatican. Uh, Michelangelo had been concerned with his. Okay, there's only one way that I can complete this sentence, which is much more helpful than the previous. Uh, what was Michelangelo worried about? I remember reading the word worried. And it was actually quite interesting. So my brain was really uh, attached to that information that, ooh, the Pope really wanted Michelangelo to do this painting, but Michelangelo was worried that, and what was it? He was really worried about this. Yeah, very nice, Amira. So Amira says experience or lack of experience, right? So Michelangelo had been concerned with his lack of experience. Painting frescoes. So he didn't really have experience painting these frescoes. Yeah, Haman, very good. He was, he was more of a sculptor, not so much of a painter, right? So now I can check to see if there's a match there. And another way to say lack of experience is inexperience. So what's the correct answer there? The correct answer is, let's see how many of you come up with it. Yeah, you're probably all thinking, oh, I had to read it all. Yeah, absolutely. It's I. Inexperience painting frescoes. Very good. So I it is for this one. Okay, next one. A logistical problem Michelangelo faced was this should be really easy. So Michelangelo's big problem was, what was his big problem? Again, you should have visualized this. What was his big problem? that Michelangelo or anybody else painting the Sistine Chapel would have faced. <laughs> One of you are like, A, A, A. Um, what was A? I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, the height of the ceiling. I would have just answered that the ceiling was really high. So yeah, logistical problem Michelangelo faced is that the ceiling was really high. So A, okay. Uh, unpainted areas of the chapel. Does anybody remember? How would you finish that one? So unpainted areas of the chapel. What, do, what did those show? Again, this was very, very visual. So very, very visual. And I just taught you this word today. So unpainted areas of the chapel was what? Yeah, very good, Haman. It was due to scaffolds. Yeah. Um, was where scaffolds were attached, right? Yeah, so that's where they stuck the poles, okay? Yeah, very good. All right, so let's see if we have something similar. Uh, I bet you can get that one pretty quick. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Correct answer is, you only see that word in one place. Yeah, very good, just pre D, yeah. So 30 is D. Provide evidence of Michelangelo's scaffolding. Yeah, absolutely. So D for this one. And use capital letters, students, not small letters for these, okay? 31, a common misconception is that. 
Um, so what is a common misconception? A misconception is a, is a wrong belief. So what is a common misconception when people hear stories about Michelangelo painting the Sistine Chapel? What is a false idea or a wrong belief? And you might even see this in some movies or cartoons or storybooks if you're reading about Michelangelo's life or the Sistine Chapel. So what is a false belief? Again, this was very visual when the author explained this to us in the passage. So hopefully you, you saw this in your head. And especially if you were Michelangelo or the tour guide, you should have really kind of seen this information. So many people wrongly believe that Michelangelo, it's the ceiling of the chapel, right? So many people think that Michelangelo, when he painted this ceiling of this chapel with these uh, scaffoldings, okay? So many people think that Michelangelo did this painting while laying down, is a really long paintbrush, while laying down on his back, okay? So many people think that he was painting laying down on his back because that would be easier, uh, but he didn't, okay? Michelangelo was not laying down on his back when he was painting the ceiling. In fact, he was standing up and he had his neck in a very awkward position, kinked back like this, and he wasn't too happy about that, so we're gonna give him a frowny face, right? Okay? So Michelangelo had some serious neck pains after years of painting the Sistine Chapel. Again, very visual. So what's the correct answer? H, he painted the frescoes while on his back. Okay, so here the correct answer is, a common misconception is that H, Michelangelo painted the ceiling while on his back. He didn't. And again, you should have visualized that because there was a really big part about him uh, painting the ceiling with his neck in a bad position. And he had a lot of pains and he even wrote a poem about it. So there's quite a bit of information about that misconception. Okay. Now, again, uh, it's tricky because if a student is just like, oh, okay, this is a tricky word, misconception. So I'm going to scan for this. You won't find it. The word misconception is not in the passage. Okay. So you're going to waste a lot of time skimming and scanning for a word that doesn't exist. Because in the passage, if you go back and check, it says a false belief. Okay. So... You won't find that word. You might not even find the word common. So you really do have to visualize to get the correct answer. Okay. All right. Four years of working in uncomfortable conditions meant that Michelangelo must have had. What do you think? How would you answer that on your own? So four years of working in uncomfortable conditions. It took him four years to paint that ceiling. In uncomfortable conditions meant that Michelangelo must have had what? How would you just naturally finish that sentence? Okay. How would you naturally finish that? So I'm a little bit worried about this because I see that Preeti for Dobbs just pre you're really kind of jumping for the, the answer. So you're really, uh, it feels to me like you're very dependent on the answer sheet to give you your answers. But students, I strongly encourage you at home when you're doing this to rely more on your own brain, okay? Um, it's not going to be that easy in the exam necessarily. You have to rely on your own brain, okay? You have to be able to answer on your own. Um, the correct answer is B, but you should answer that on your own. So four years of working in uncomfortable conditions meant that Michelangelo must have had great physical, 
form or strength. Okay, so that's how I would answer that. And then I would search for the answer. So all B, mental and physical strength. Good, that's close. Okay, so Priti Yogi, Priti Sina now, that's much better. Okay, all right. Okay, students, uh, so for now, um, we'll stop with these questions and I'll let you complete the multiple choice and true false not given on your own. So why was plaster laid each day? Again, you should answer that first on your own. There are your choices. And then 34, what did other fresco painters do that Michelangelo did not? The Sistine Chapel has survived to modern day because. Uh, and then here are the yes, no, not given questions. Uh, this video will be on the channel after about an hour. So you can go back, check these questions near the end of the video. And then uh, if you email me your answers for the multiple choice and the yes, no, not given, I'll send you back the answer key so you can see how you did. Okay. All right, again, students, the email where you want to send your answers is adrian at aehelp.com. Again, for those of you who have our premium package, we'll have the answer key in your book two in exam six reading, okay? So for everybody, join our premium packages at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gialtshelp.com for general. This reading passage from, was from our second exam book, test number six from aehelp.com. Coming up in 30 minutes, we will do a listening part three and four, uh, practice and a bit of strategy together. You're very welcome for Dobbs. You're very welcome, Preeti. Have a lovely day, everyone, and hopefully I'll see you in about 30 minutes for the next live IELTS class. Bye for now.